Welcome to our Shield of the Sun video where we will be talking about a man named John Todd. And a lot of people I know have probably heard of John Todd and a lot of people have um, a lot of ranges of, of opinions on him or a lot of people probably never even heard of him. On my own set, you know, speaking about John Todd is, you know, is a sad deal for me because, you know, uh, John Todd is somebody that, you know, spoke uh, very highly in terms of information about the Illuminati and he spoke uh, very much about the entertainment industry and about the government industry and um, you know a lot of the things that he said affected a lot of people in a lot of different ways and um, so we're gonna kinda just break down some of the things about who this man was um, a lot of people who have studied this information have probably at one time or another ran into his teachings or heard of him so we're going to kind of go into the beginnings of, of who he was, basically. Now, we got to go back into the 70s because what happened is, is that Todd's uh, ministry in, in regards to this really took place in the 70s. But we got to talk about really the family that John Todd came from. A lot of people probably heard of the Todd family. Uh, the Todd family is a branch family of one of the 13 Illuminati families. And a lot of weird things have happened with this family. I mean, even until this day, um, you know, the, this is a family that was extensively involved in witchcraft, and it was a family that was extensively involved in a lot of Illuminati practices. And so what happened is, is that one of them, uh, around the late 60s, uh, began to um, have very different beliefs uh, in regards to Christianity, and that man was John Todd. And what happened with John Todd was he was in the military, uh, but he very much lied about his activities uh, regarding the Vietnam War and regarding what he did. He was known as, as a desk clerk in the military, meaning somebody who used to file paperwork. He was a victim of mind control, and uh, he was a victim of witchcraft ritual abuse. This abuse became so extensive, became very, very... Um, torturous and tormenting for him that he began to have a religious conversion to Christ and this began for him in the 70s and what he started to do was he came out of the occult and he began to reveal secrets uh, basically what they do in witchcraft and their knowledge about the uh, New World Order which was labeled under in a, a group that was responsible for it called the Illuminati but Todd never really explained the truth about what Illuminati is and how it relates basically to these families and how it is in a cult among the most powerful people in the world. So what we had with Todd was when he first started his ministry, um, he spoke a lot of truth, but a lot of it was also concealed in certain tall tales he would, he would tell. Um, for instance, uh, when he would speak about the military, he would say that he was extensively involved in the military, and this is why he knows this. It turned out that he was not as involved in the military as people thought, but he did know a lot of troops about the military, about what they were doing in the Vietnam War. And a lot of the, his teaching also hit hard on the music industry. He claimed that he was personal friends with David Crosby, um, Stills and Nash and many other groups from the 60s. It turned out that he was not a personal friend to these people, but he was uh, friends with people who basically handled their ceremonies and, and witchcraft covens. So it is true that he did know a lot of the satanic nature of the music industry, but he was not as involved as people think he was. And another aspect that he hit on uh, was basically about uh, the New World Order and about certain politicians. Uh, he was always claiming that um, he, the, basically the government rulers were organizing um, a, basically a political machine to overthrow the U.S. Constitution. That was actually very true. But his involvement in, in that particular asset of things was not as extensive as people thought it was. So what he did was is that Todd basically would become a Christian and he started speaking at certain local churches. 
his testimony became so powerful to people that a lot of people were hearing information, uh, this type of information for the first time. And it literally rattled a lot of people's cages, a lot of people's emotions. And that it, it began to um, incorporate a um, movement, if you will, to uh, see this insidious evil exposed. And he became one of the, the major uh, uh, ministers behind it. Apparently, what we had with Todd was that he was a witchcraft coven member. He was a, a priest or a warlock among this coven. And he did do ceremonies with a lot of these people. A lot of these were kind of just uh, ceremonial rituals. Um, the the uh, aspects of him being naked and, and selling his soul to Satan and, and signing his blood, his name in blood, was very true. And he did uh, uh, meet a lot of these people, but he met them through basically a common interest in witchcraft. He was not uh, personal, personal friends with them, even though he was uh, somebody who did know them uh, through this acquaintance. So he did know that they were worshiping Satan, and he did know about certain things they were doing uh, to inspire for music. And so um, this is something at first he would only uh, preach on, but then uh, what happened was is that he started revealing far too much information um, about this particular uh, coven and about their practices and what they were doing. So what happened is, is that his family would go after him. Basically, they would have him arrested, and basically they would beat him, and basically strip him of his money and strip him of a lot of things. They would just basically make life a living hell for him. This pressure uh, began to really, really uh, weigh on him, and then the Illuminati had an interest to turn John Todd into a disinformation artist, basically to turn on the ministry he was doing, uh, to turn on the truth he was speaking, and then to go back out among the ministries and churches that were supporting him, and now basically spread what was known as paranoia and fear, to basically provide uh, disinformation along with the truth. So John Todd would become the Alex Jones of that 70s and 80s. He was somebody who started off, um, you know, honestly in that respects, but then he would turn on the truth. What they did was, is that after they got a hold of him, and after they got a control of him, and after they manipulated him, they hooked him up uh, with a man named Jack Chick. Jack Chick was a complete disinformation artist. He was always posing as a Christian. He was always posing as someone that was on our side. But it was actually the Illuminati who set him up, who funded him and funded his comic book strips, his company, and basically for the purpose of basically spreading disinformation. Uh, Jack Chick would um, make a lot of prophecies that did not come true. He would uh, basically instill a lot of fear tactics into people um, based upon these prophecies uh, that never came to pass. He basically disappointed a lot of people, and he basically broke a lot of people's hearts. Uh, Todd was then um, hooked up with this man, and this man began to use the fundings uh, to basically fund John Todd's ministry. So John Todd's ministry would take a turn from the truth to basically uh, lies uh, that were um, concealed with the truth. And so one of the things that um, Todd was basically doing was he was trying to get Christians to become paranoid and to start a revolt against the government. We're talking a violent revolt, where at the end of the day he was telling uh, other Christians and other people that they should arm themselves and think about attacking the police and think about attacking political figures, which goes well, well beyond what we're supposed to be doing as responsible Christians. Um, it went well, well beyond self-defense. He was basically trying to start a revolt that could end up getting a lot of Christians killed. And uh, a lot of the things that he spoke on had uh, strong elements of truth. Uh, for instance, uh, when he spoke about the music industry, he basically would tell a story about David Crosby. And he basically stated that uh, David Crosby and others worked for record companies that had temples or witchcraft temples in their record companies where which uh, in the studio they would record a song and, and songs were recorded on a master uh, which was you know basically um, a recording 
of a song when it's first recorded. And they would take this song and uh, bring it to a group of witches. And these witches would then uh, pray to the devil over it in the hopes that the devil would attach many evil spirits to this recording to where when the album was sold, then the demonic influence would follow everywhere it goes. Now Todd claimed that all music, even Christian music, uh, was centered on this particular uh, ceremony. That is not true. Though a lot of secular music is centered around that ceremony, um, there is music that is not centered around it. Though you do have Christian artists that are posing as Christians, you have many that are not. So we have to look at the essence of music. Music, basically, is a gift from God. And it, it depends on how you use that gift and what you're involved in. It is true that Crosby uh, would take his masters and bring them to certain ceremonial people and have them cast spells over it. It's, it's a technique that actually Charles Manson and many others uh, introduced to a lot of these artists. So Lester Crawley uh, was actually the guy who came up with this idea to put subliminal messages and backward messages and ask Satans for blessings upon their music. And there are many artists, you know, uh, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, uh, many of these 60s groups, these New Age groups, uh, that were actually doing this. Even to this day, it's still going on, you know, among um, uh, rock music or, you know, grunge music or alternative hip-hop, rap, pop music, um, you name it. There are a lot of artists that are doing that. But there are also, at the same time, a lot of artists that are not doing that. And unfortunately, they're not as famous as the ones that are doing it. So music um, can be done pure. Keep in mind, heaven is a society full of music. Uh, God is somebody that loves music. He created music. Uh, so we have basically a difference uh, between those that would use music for evil and those that would uh, use music for good. Todd never explained it that way. Um, he first started out only speaking about the artists that he knew were satanic, and then he switched, and he accused a whole entire uh, art form of music to be just completely evil. He was also um, accusing certain Christian ministers who were genuine of being in the witchcraft coven when they were not, and inadvertently protecting those like himself who were. Todd at first was honest about his involvement with witchcraft, and then it turned, and he began to claim that he was an unwilling victim when uh, he was actually born into a coven family. And a lot of that, a lot of his switch and his disinformation switch started uh, with basically what his family did to him and what Jack Chick would have him do. So Jack Chick was, became his, basically his funder and handler, and he would handle other people. And Jack Chick was somebody who deceived other Christians who had a legitimate, real testimony, but that testimony became highly, highly blinded uh, due to the fact that they were dealing with a man who was not on their side and he would end up betraying a lot of Christian teachers. And the effort of this was that the Illuminati was very real. Selling your soul, the Baphomet, was very real. And so the Illuminati knew that sooner or later this was all going to get exposed. So what they tried to do was to basically discredit this type of ministry so that people would, you know, not believe it uh, due to the, the bad handling and the bad decisions that other ministers made um, at the start of this ministry. And so this will end our video for part one. Welcome to our Shield of the Sun video. This is John Todd part two. And so having said that, when John Todd was uh, hooked up with Jack Chick, his ministry uh, went from an honest intention uh, to a really corrupt intention. Uh, Todd was seeking money uh, for a lot of different projects that he would tell the people he was involved in. This money was actually going to himself. It was not going to help further the ministry. It was not going to help, you know, other Christians or homeless people or other people that were in need. He would also tell uh, the ministry or other churches that it was important for him to get money to buy guns. And he would basically tell people about all the guns that he's trying to buy and the bullets and ammunition that he was trying to get. 
he would even show up to a lot of these preaching engagements armed with a weapon. Uh, for instance, there was a few churches that actually kicked him out when after he spoke, he one day sat down after his uh, preaching, he got up and his nine millimeter ended up falling out of his pocket, which freaked out so many people because they were basically listening to a man who was on a pulpit armed with a nine millimeter while preaching about Christ and the importance of warning them against the Illuminati. And this type of preaching is very foul because when you're preaching truth and you're trying to stand for truth, um, you shouldn't be armed while you're doing it in front of Christians that are unarmed, not interested in trying to kill you. And so um, it's basically uh, uh, evidence of fear that uh, he was a very fearful man. He did have a lot to be afraid of, but it wasn't against Christians. Uh, it was against the people that were controlling him. So uh, he became very filled with a lot of paranoia. He described having gun battles with the police and the Illuminati. Uh, these battles never took place, by the way. Uh, he basically, at one time, when he went to one church, uh, he basically uh, got people so afraid because he said that uh, one hour before he got there, he was having a gun battle with the police in the parking lot, even though the people who showed up early never heard of a shot fired, never saw a gun battle, and um, never saw anything like that, basically. And so uh, he was lying about the uh, encounters that he was having and the so-called fights that he was having. Then uh, a lot of positions on, his, on the music industry started to change. He said that he was uh, president of, of Zodiac Records and that um, he was basically a, a high-level man involved in the industry where people would have to directly go to him to get a record contract. That was absolutely not true. Um, the truth was is that he was basically a warlock who would entertain um, other artists uh, with this witchery. And he was not the only one. There were several of them that would do that. But this does not mean that they are personally, you know, friends with these people. Uh, and he, he never held a position in the music industry of, of that rank either. He knew people who did. And he spoke a lot to them. And they would tell him many, many things. Where in turn, instead of just saying that he was learning from resources and, and, and other sources, he would basically put himself in that position. Also, he made claims that JFK was alive and that one day he was going to be revealed and that uh, he was partying with David Crosby and other people and he was hiding out with Hitler. That was completely untrue. JFK is, is very much uh, passed away now. He is no longer alive. Um, Hitler also is no longer alive, even though he did fake his death in World War II, but he would later die. And so the people that are posing as Hitler now is not the real Hitler. And so this is something that a lot of people are not wrapping their minds around. But if you go back into a lot of uh, Jack Chicks' publishing, you will see a lot of these disinformation and indiscrepancies. You'll see some truth, and then all of a sudden they're, they're running down a list of things that are just completely not true. So John Todd disappointed a lot of Christians. He disappointed a lot of people by betraying them. Soon in time, his ministry uh, began to be revealed for the fraudulent behavior that he was perpetrating. A lot of people started seeing through him. A lot of people started seeing through Jack Chick, especially when these so-called prophecies that were supposed to happen within the coming years never happened. Jesus warned us that there is no time frame to his prophecies, by the way. You know, there's no set date or set month or set year. He tells us that he will come like a thief in the night, that he will come when you don't expect it and when you don't see it coming. Let's take 9-11 for instance. 9-11 was prophesied about in the Bible, but there was no set date on it. Nobody knew when and where it was going to happen. Now, when it happened, did you all expect it? No, you didn't. Um, were you all prepared for it? No, you were not. Um, the only ones that were prepared for it were people in covens, and even they didn't know exactly when it would happen. They just knew it was soon to happen. 
while other people just had absolutely no idea. And those coven members who knew about it were of the echelon, meaning they were of a $50 million mark, they were millionaires, and so they were very much closer to the rulers and the political engine that was going on. So people at a lower rank didn't even know that was about to go down. So when it happened, it shocked everybody. It surprised everybody, and it affected everybody in all kinds of ways. So this is the essence of prophecy. It happens when you don't see it coming. And so when Jack Chicks and, and others' prophecies uh, were not fulfilled, um, in accordance to when they said, a lot of people were angry. They were angry that they gave him his money. They were angry that they, they went into more revolting ways um, against the government where there were unnecessary altercations that took place uh, that didn't need to take place. And he was responsible for a lot of that. When that happened, um, all these church organizations that supported him turned completely against him. His family then began to disown him, and then John Todd would go into recuse. He would go underground. What happened was is that several times he would change his name, and he got more involved in the witchcraft covens in the 80s and 90s, particularly uh, with the pedophilic involvement. And so this is the sad thing that resulted with him. Uh, he would then uh, take jobs uh, claiming to be a karate teacher. So he would get a job at a karate school and teach people karate, even though he wasn't a black belt. And even though he knew a little karate, you know, whatever he picked up during his basic training in the military. And um, basically, he started to touch girls and boys in places where they didn't want to be touched. And he would end up raping a few of these women, who were actually young, young girls. He would be fired from these karate schools for doing that. Then he got involved with witchcraft covens in certain towns, and he would become involved with the Open Wiccan Church. Once again, he would change his name, and when he did that, uh, he started to recruit young teenage girls for the coven. In this process, he would have these girls molested. He would do the molesting himself and he was sleeping with a lot of underage girls. Uh, he did this to such a degree that even the witches uh, were finding his behavior too blatant because they usually keep this stuff in-house. They usually don't want to be too open with it uh, because what will happen is they can get caught. So um, they basically began to kick him out of many covens. I mean, this guy got so bad that even witchcraft covens didn't even want him around. And he came from the Todd family. So he started to become more and more demonic and, and more and more wicked. He would then make another attempt to try to come out and start another ministry, but his handlers became too afraid of that degree, so they locked him in a mental institution. When they did that, they tried to re-mind control him, but so much of that program was breaking down uh, due, to, due to intense uh, psychoschematic behavior he was always displaying. When that happened, they decided to just keep him in the mental institution for the rest of his life. And he would be kept there until the day he died. Uh, Todd did not die in the 80s and then disappear. And then this other Todd would come along and be the one responsible for this raping and, and being locked in a mental institution. That is not true. It is the same man. And uh, what happened was is that he was somebody who started off wanting to do something right, but ended up messing it all up and ended up selling out and doing wrong uh, toward a lot of people. To this day on the internet, many of John Todd's uh, ministry and his teachings can be found on the internet all over YouTube. There are many, many tapes that were recorded and then uploaded to the YouTube channels. Some of it is very potent information. Most of it is not. And uh, a sad reality is, is that Todd was somebody else, was somebody who started trying to do something heroic, but ended up disappointing the people that he was trying to help. He ended up betraying them, and he betrayed the ministry that Jesus Christ wanted him to do. But due to the torment, and due to the pressure, and due to the persecutions that come in this type of field, he would fail everybody. So what's the lessons that other ministers can learn from John Todd? How about don't sell out? How about if, if you're going to preach to other people, stand by your convictions. 
stand by the word of God. Jesus taught us not to fear for our lives, not to fear the things that the world fears, meaning you are to give your life for Jesus Christ, especially if you're doing ministry, especially if you're teaching this type of truth. You should expect to be assassinated. You should expect to lose your benefits or lose money. You should expect to lose family members. You should expect people to betray you. You should expect that your life will never be the same again. And you have to be strong enough in Christ to realize that and basically grit up your loins and prepare yourself for that. It doesn't mean that Jesus will abandon you. Jesus will help you. He will provide helpers. He will provide a way. Even Todd was provided help over and over again. But he kept looking at the negatives that were happening to him instead of embracing the positives and the blessings that Jesus wanted to do for him. It's about never giving up. It's about never betraying your convictions and your beliefs if this is something that you want to learn or even been chosen to minister for. There are a lot of covenant members out there that know a whole lot of things. And if you guys ever decide to be a real man and a real woman and speak out against them and really tell the truth, then you are heroes for that. You are true, uh, child, you are true warriors, children of God for that. God will most definitely bless you. He will most definitely be on your side. But a lot of you won't do that because you're too afraid of what other people will think about you and what your covenant members and government spooks will do to you. Well, they're already doing it to you. They're already betraying you. I mean, your friends, you can't even trust them. At the end of the day, if they're setting up other people and killing animals and killing babies and taking advantage and exploiting the system and exploiting other people, then quite clearly there's no love in the coven. Quite clearly there's no truth in the coven. Quite clearly they're already tormenting you. So why sit there and take it? Maybe if you're going to do some betraying, maybe you should betray Satan by telling the truth and shaming the devil. And if you do do that, stand by your conviction. Don't turn in the middle of it and break a lot of people's hearts due to bad behavior. Todd taught some truth, but he also lied. Todd started out with good intentions, but betrayed. Like Judas Iscariot, he started out as an apostle, but due to the pressures of being an apostle, due to the weight of the temptation, he would betray his Lord for a measly 30 pieces of silver which wasn't really a whole lot of money, by the way. It was barely any. I mean, we're not even talking about gold. And even if it was 30 pieces of gold, it still wouldn't even be a lot of money. So Todd would do the same. Jack Chick would do the same. Alex Jones would do the same. David Icke would do the same. All these guys have this thing in common with Todd. They tell you some truth, but then end up betraying the people due to the fact that they're narcissistic, weak, vain, prideful, at the end of the day, cowards. You need to stand up for what is right. You need to be willing to die for what is right. If you believe you're going to heaven, someone pulling a gun on your head should be the best day of your life and not the worst. God bless you and good night.